Regina Langeth was born May 21, 1915, in Pretty Prairie, Kansas, which is 50 miles of present-day Wichita, Kansas. Her parents, John and Mary, were married since January 1899. They were both orphans. She was the seventh of 11 children. They came to Oklahoma in a covered wagon. Regina was very young and sick during their trip from Kansas to Oklahoma. She was fed graham crackers and water to try to keep her healthy and to stay alive until they got settled in Oklahoma. Between the two last children, the Simon family was able to buy a 160-acre farm. It was a $6,000 mortgage. It was located west of Canute. They were able to buy this through the assistance of her father's brother-in-law. In the Dust Bowl and, and Depression time, they didn't lose their farm. They just paid the interest on it. She said it was a hard time, but they didn't blame anyone. It was a nature's thing. She said people didn't complain much then. They were thankful for what they had. She was very close to her sister Cecilia, who was just younger than her. When Cecilia was about nine years old, she fell down the steps of the school basement. They didn't report it, fearing they would get into trouble, because if they got into trouble at school, it was worse at home. The next day, her leg hurt so bad when they were walking home that she had to lean on my grandma to get home. Since they had gotten home so late, their mother was running up the road to meet them. The doctor came to the house and diagnosed her with rheumatism. Their school was called Pleasant Valley and it was located southwest of the farm and it was about two and a half mile walk. So it was very hard for Cecilia to make the walk alone on her leg and ankle. A few days later, the inflammation spread and her appendix ruptured. She died at the hospital. During her funeral, which the casket was open, my grandmother asked her mother why her foot was lying the way it was. The undertaker said that it was because the little leg and ankle were broken. That was the first time her parents had heard about it. Her baby brother didn't live through his toddler years, which was very common back in those days. My grandma worked in the fields and learned to cook and sew at a very early age. They had cotton crops and always had people coming by looking for work and to help around the farm. They were paid by a meal that was cooked by my grandmother and her sisters and mother. Going to church was very important to my grandmother, even at a very young age. Only her father and the oldest children were allowed to go, since she needed to stay home with her mother to help with the chores and the younger children. As time went on, Henry, which was the oldest, started to get a ride with his friends. And the day came when her father asked her to go. She was so excited and asked her mama what to wear. She told her, child, you wear the best you have, you act your best, look your best, and be your best when you go to Mass. You will never go any place more important. She had one Sunday dress, and that is what she wore. She attended St. Francis, the first Catholic church in western Oklahoma, and it was located southeast of Canute. My grandmother was a hard and conscientious worker and never liked to see anyone or anything suffer. Her dad had sick calves that were going to die, and she tended them back to health. However, two times her father had to sell the calves for money for the family. When she was a senior in high school, she really wanted a watch. She had it all picked out. She told her father that the calf that she was nursing back to health was hers, and she didn't want to give it up. One day, a man came to buy it. She told her father she needed $12 for it. Her father came back to the house and told her the man would only offer her $10, and she declined. Her father went back out to the man, and eventually he gave her the $12 for her calf. She still has the watch. My grandma was the first member of her family to graduate high school. She moved to Oklahoma City and attended a business school. Two years after that, her mother got sick and she moved home to take care of her. Her father had taken her to Wichita to find out she had cancer and in those days there was nothing to do for it. She was bedfast without medication and that summer came on and there they had no electricity. My grandmother stayed with her and helped nurse her as best she could. To relieve some of her suffering, the men would fill a big tub of water from the well and they would all set her in it. She died within six months of diagnosis. Before her death, her mother had told my grandmother to go back to the city and get what she wanted. My grandmother worked at the railroad station in downtown Oklahoma City and she met her husband of 52 years in 1945. She always wanted everyone to know the importance of faith and devotion to God and their family. 
She and her husband bought their first home in 1950 near their church to raise their three children. She went to heaven at the age of 91 in 2007. As I drove to meet with my family the morning of her death, I looked up to heaven and I saw two planes that had crisscrossed their smoke forming the biggest cross I'd ever seen in the sky. And I knew she was at church now forever in eternity.